So, the question now becomes, how can we tell if an alternating series converges or diverges? The tool that we're going to use to answer this question is called the alternating series test, which says that if an alternating series, sum of minus 1 to the n plus 1 bn, satisfies two conditions, the first being that the limit of the bn's is 0, and the second being that bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn for all n, or in other words, that the bn's are decreasing, then the alternating series converges. Before we apply the alternating series test to some examples, let's give some intuition for why this test works. So if a series satisfies conditions 1 and 2 from the test, let's think about what the partial sums look like. Well, we start at 0, and then to find the first partial sum, we add b1. From there, to get the second partial sum, we subtract b2. However, since the bn are decreasing, we could not have made it all the way back to 0. Then, we add b3 to get the third partial sum. Again, since the bn's are decreasing, b3 is less than b2, and so we can't have made it all the way back to s1. And we continue this process, zigzagging back and forth, and the fact that the bn's go to 0 means that these zigzags will get really, really small, and will eventually approach some value s, which will be the sum of the alternating series. Cool. Now, before we move on to some examples, a couple quick remarks. First, the same test works for series of the other form, with minus 1 to the n, for exactly the same reason we just described. Next, we really only need that the bn's are eventually decreasing, or that bn plus 1 is less than bn for all n greater than or equal to big N, where big N is some positive integer. This is because if the bn's are eventually decreasing, then we can rip off the finitely many terms at the beginning before the bn's are decreasing and get a series that converges by the alternating series test. And then we can add back on the terms that we ripped off. Since adding finitely many terms to a series doesn't change whether or not it converges, our original series converges as well. On a similar note, how do we even tell if the bn's are decreasing? Sometimes it's obvious, but other times it may not be so clear. Well, if we were asked in calculus 1 whether a function is decreasing, we would immediately think to take a derivative and see if it's negative. And we can do a similar thing here. So, if there's a differentiable function f, so that when we plug in n, we get out bn, then we can use f prime of x to check if the bn's are decreasing. And for the last remark, notice that the alternating series test only tells us when an alternating series converges. So, how can we determine when an alternating series diverges? Well, we've already seen an example of a divergent alternating series. And how do we figure out that it was divergent? We use the divergence test. And this will be the tool we use in general. So, if when we take the limit of the bn's, we get something non-zero, then our alternating series automatically diverges by the divergence test.